Recently, I took something called the uh, FE, or it's also called the EIT. It's an engineering type of uh, exam that some, but not all, engineers should take if they're going to get into a position that requires them to take it, or you know, if their school wants them to pass it. Different kinds of uh, reasons, but uh, it's going to be the same type of test. Divided, of course, into different disciplines. I took the other disciplines exam because I took the review course for it. So, um, and I, I took the California-based one. So, it was pretty interesting. I'm glad to say that I passed. So, with that, I want to share with you seven tips on how to, you know, do as best as you can on the exam. My first tip would be to not to stay so long on one question and if you're going to stay long, don't stay longer than three minutes. The thing is, you know, my review course professor said that if you're going to take longer than three minutes then ideally you want to be able to go back and review it if you would really want to. More on that later. But if you divide 110 it's gonna be around around three minutes per question so if you go over it's not gonna do you any good for the other questions especially if you're toward the middle of the exam or beginning or middle uh, number two would be to be neat with your scratch paper now for this for this exam starting in 2014 it's gonna be computer based so they're gonna give you some kind of booklets with plastic paper and a marker so you want to be able to be neat with it, especially if uh, you're used to erasing or scratching things out because this will not let you erase anything. You want to be able to know, oh, okay, uh, this was question one and I could flip back to it whenever I want to. This was question uh, 24, I could flip back to that because I you know, made some kind of indication that that's where I want to go back to. Not like if you say, oh shoot, I have so many notes, or I have so many uh, scratch work that I can't go back to it. And that's going to be a problem for you. You can't read your own writing. So be neat with your scratch paper. Number three is to breeze through the easy ones. Now my understanding, or when I took it, my experience was there were a lot of pretty simple unassumingly simple questions on the exam and because of that it might kind of you know weird you out a little bit but don't take too long on those because those are supposed to be easy so I would say if you see something that looks too good to be true it probably is so good that you have to just breeze through don't take longer than, I would say, 30 seconds on them. Just make sure that you get it right because you do not want to miss those. Alright, number four. Study with others, especially those who are stronger in different disciplines. Let's say, like for example, I'm an electrical engineer. I would be able to help you with, I guess, circuits. There, there are parts of the exam that has, you know, DC circuits, AC circuits, um, all of these uh, mostly theory kind of questions. Uh, and let's say because I'm EE, I would like to ask someone in mechanical engineering or civil engineering for other types of you know, studying help, such as when I asked about fluid mechanics, fluid dynamics, thermodynamics. I had problems with those and I was able to ask good friend to help me out and you know just go over some of the things that aren't as easy to to pick up especially if you're learning it for the first time like I had to. Number five read up on vocabulary you don't know especially because there are a lot of problems that ask you just you know the concept of that discipline uh, for example, 
a very simple one would be what does uh, the the word adiabatic mean? Adiabatic. I don't know how you pronounce it. Uh, and that word, you know, looks kind of difficult. But if you recall, oh, adiabatic means reversible, and it's also a closed system. I, I, at least I think that's correct. I mean, it doesn't have any heat transfer. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It's reversible, basically, what I'm saying. And it's also in a closed system. Gosh, I don't even remember. But that's up to you to, to learn those vocabulary. Number six would be to divide out your strengths and your weaknesses. Now, like I said, my, my thermal, my fluids, heat transfer, uh, what else, mechanics and materials, those kind of stuff, I really had to struggle and try to get into, uh, at least understanding the fundamentals, because, you know, if you don't know the fundamentals, at least recognizing that this problem is asking for, you know, a specific answer, not something completely different, then if you at least have that, then you're good. Know that your strengths, you could just go over because you have a strong chance of getting those correct, hopefully without any of those dumb mistakes. And those weaknesses, at least, at the very least, understand the, the basic concepts. And then work hard on understanding the more trickier questions because there are a lot of those uh, examples that you could find in books and online to help you you know recognize keywords and look for those formulas and lastly number seven is if it looks weird forget about it take an educated guess now, I read somewhere in the, the reference or some reading material online from the NCES uh, and it said that there are some questions that are research I mean those questions are for them to research on the people taking the exam which means that they have no bearing on your final score they have nothing to do with whether you know if you if you pass it I mean if you get it correct if you don't get it correct it won't have anything to do. So I think this is what I'm thinking is that if it looks weird, it's probably one of those kind of questions and really don't even take that long. I mean if you think you know how to solve it, which would make it not too weird for you, then I would say spend no longer than three minutes as I've said before. But if it looks too weird and for some reason you can't find any mention of it in the uh, reference handbook which is of course uh, in the computer form now then I would say just take the best guess you can even though it looks like uh, you only got 25% because they all look kind of the same just make the best guess you can not too high not too low maybe and finally a bonus tip is to keep positive always know that if you're going to take this exam, you have to exude some kind of, or a kind of confidence that you're going to get through this. I mean, even if you don't pass, you know that you got, you got time to improve on yourself. And if you do pass, then, you know, that's more power to you. So with that, I hope you took in something helpful. And yeah. Thanks for listening to my tips and good luck on your studying and enjoy the rest of your days. Yeah. <laughs>